As a trucker, you've kept our country going during the COVID-19 pandemic. We know that you take your role seriously. And without you, America would have shut down. The team at Rev wants to say thank you for having our backs every day. We also know that keeping costs down is your number one goal. That's why at Rev Insurance, our priority is helping you save money while keeping you safe on the road. Call 800-347-5373 and let the trucking experts at Rev assist you with a free trucking insurance quote and save up to 37%. Wow. Rev specializes in providing insurance of all types to small fleet owners and independent owner operators, whether local, short haul, or long haul. Rev Insurance can get you covered at a price that fits your budget. From liability, damages, and cargo to workers' compensation, Rev has your back while you're out there on the road. Call 800-347-5373 or visit www.revinsurance.com. That's 800-347-5373. Rev Insurance. They know truckers because they only work with truckers. Hey, drivers. Are you looking for a new job or are you looking just to become a new lease driver? Well, NCI offers new Kenworth T680 double bunk condos with APU and refrigerator, all standard in all of their equipment. Come aboard and become a lease operator, or you can become a company driver. NCI offers regional positions, over-the-road positions, team positions, and also NCI will take on a few students if you've graduated from a trucking school. Pick up the phone, check out NCI, and see if they have what you're looking for at 888-311-7076. That's 888-311-7076. Hey drivers, have you thought about becoming your own company? Have you thought you'd like to get your own authority and DOT number, but you just don't know how to go about doing it? Well, call JJ Keller and Associates. They can help you get the proper registration and credentials that you need to operate legally. They protect drivers from penalties and out of service orders as a result of not having the proper authority. They save drivers time by filing their paperwork and ensuring everything is correct. Drivers, they also help you with unified carrier registration, USDOT and MC numbers, MCS 150 updates, year around authority monitoring, and plenty more. Drivers, if you're looking to become your own company and you want your own authority number and DOT number today, call J.J. Keller & Associates at 888-601-2017. That's 888-601-2017 and tell them Talk CDL sent you. Thank you. I need to change our seats because they're so squeaky when we move. Yeah, well, we plan on getting different seats. You you know, it bothers me. for, For the many people that hear us, when we had this studio made, we got like um, director's chairs. Yeah, you wanted director's chairs so bad. We got director's chairs and they squeak every time we just... I know they suck. You, 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 we take a deep breath. They squeak. So all listen, you hear listen. is this noise. Oh, mine's not. So it's, it's, like the, it's like your car motor. Like you're hearing a noise and you take it to a mechanic, right? And then when the mechanic drives it, you're like, I swear it did it. Yeah. Even here... Right when I pulled up, it made that funky it, noise. Now it's like my, my, my seat's not screeching. That's, okay. Anyways, who cares? Um, so a couple things uh, that's on my mind and I thought was really interesting. I seen a, a uh, article on Trucker News and I actually sent it to you. The FMCSA, it says, okays pulsating brake lights on the back of tankers. And you know, like, you know who was the first one to have those pulsating headlights was the motorcycles driving around. Mm-hmm. But you've seen them coming, right? And so now, have you ever been behind one of those flashing lights? In fact, the, I think the, don't school buses have them now, Ruthann? Don't they, like when they go to break and stuff, they flash too now, I'm pretty sure, in, here uh, in Florida. Honestly, I don't know. I know they have that light that, it's a white light that blinks on top of the school bus constantly. And then when you hit, when they stop and they, they put the little stop coming out, right. that shines red. Yeah. But I don't know if they have like a pulsing. I really haven't. I try to avoid being out on the road when the buses are out only because. It's a pain. Well, it can be. If you're a school bus driver. I think school bus drivers do it on purpose. Like when they see you coming, they slow down 
on purpose. Or, no, I don't think they did. I'm, I'm going to tell you something but about got, the, the school bus drivers in Florida. I don't even know how we got to talking about this. I don't care who you are. These school bus drivers, it's so funny. They will do like a, a rolling stop on purpose to dart out in front of you so they can get in front of you and do like 500 stops on the street when they see you coming down the road. Literally. They're like the FedEx guys. They never stop at stop signs. School buses don't either. I can tell you the the other day I was on the way to dance and I went, for whatever reason, I ended up going the back way. I think I had to go pick Lucas up or something. So anyways, I was on the back road. Lucas is one of the students. Yeah. They don't they don't know that here. Okay, well, Toxidio. anyways. So I'm at the the... Not on the main road, but on the side road there. Mm-hmm. And the bus literally had come to the stop, put the little stop sign out, or was in that process, mm-hmm. but it was it was out. Right, right. And a van, a work van, right. I don't remember what the company's name was, went phew, right by, and I'm like, you serious? That There was no... There's no way to say, oh, they just did it. He flew past there, and the stop was already out. Oh, yeah. No, so I, root, I was actually irritated. I root for those guys to get tickets. So. Well, as soon as they, as soon as the guy went through, she wrote something down on her. Like, she pulled a, a tablet out, and she wrote something down. And, you know, most of these buses are equipped with cameras. Right. So I think what it is is she wrote down the time, my guessing. She wrote down the time so that they can go back to just go to that section and pull up the, the driver's information so they can contact him. Well, I, I know that in, in Florida they have the red light tickets, and I would I mean, I don't know that it's an actual law right now, whether you're whoever you are that goes through the red lights of a school bus, but... Oh, you get major fined. But do they send a ticket to these guys now? Oh, yeah. I mean, as long as it's on video, why not? Give them a ticket. It, I mean, I'm yeah. all for that. Because if somebody's little kid, you know, every year somebody gets killed um, by somebody not paying attention to school buses. But it, which it's kind of like the opposite of what I want to talk about here on these flashing lights. Um, I guess that, you know, Grondike, the big company, they're a big tanker company. They actually had a, um, I was looking at their statistic. Now, they were the one, first ones. It looks like they're the first ones to be allowed to have the, on a trucking company, not just the school buses, to have, when they break, they have these pulsating flashing brake lights, you know, mm-hmm. which is really kind of, if you stare at them, it'll blind you. But at the same time, this is my thinking. If you're texting and driving, right, mm-hmm. and you're coming up behind these guys, a flashing light will cat. Well, you'll cat a lot of times catch that out of the corner of your eye, mm-hmm. and so listen to this here. It said, um, in a thirty-month period using the light. So thirty months is two and a half years. Mm-hmm. That'd be two years and six months. It said using the lights in thirty months, it reduced rear end collisions by thirty-four percent. That's huge. Yeah, it is huge. Right. So out of every hundred rear end collisions that you know they would have, which is not going to be that many, but at the same time, enough of them, 34 of them that were eliminated because the driver... Flashed light. Right, the driver's behind, seen it. And then listen to this, and it says, and it eliminated all rear crashes at railroad crossings. So somehow, I guess they got rear-ended at... um, Well, because tankers by law, I thought, have to stop at every railroad crash c- yep. crossing, no matter if the things are up or down, they have to stop to look, just like buses and so forth, I guess because of... For whatever reason, but mm-hmm. the bottom line is it eliminated every... They haven't had one. So I thought that one, it was it was a pretty pretty cool thing, but here's what my thinking is. if If this is proven to eliminate a big percentage of the rear end collisions, why wouldn't they just put them on everybody? You know what I mean? That way you've got the flashing light in front of you when someone's stopping. If you're looking down or you're distracted, that flashing light, because we all know that, what what is it, your peripheral? Is that how you say that, your peripheral vision? Yes, your side vision. Right. Well, what would be, you know, whatever the, yeah, right, exactly. But what would be... Say I'm looking down and I and there's a little flashing going on. Well, that would I guess would be kind of considered your peripheral, but it might be considered a, another name for peripheral. Like 
Right. Because when you're looking down, like you, when you go to the eye doctor, they kind of go in the whole circle around your, your outer area instead mm. of direct. And that would be considered peripheral because it's not your, there's a name for it when it's du- directly on. Right. There's like names for each area. But I could see because people don't expect tankers to stop at railroad crossings. So oh. that's, I could see why they had more rear end crashes in that area. Mm-hmm. And now they don't. But why couldn't they put them on the ICC bumpers of every truck? I mean, well, every truck has to have them, right? I'm thinking cars and everything. You know what I mean? Like, wow. well, think about it. You got a, a, a mama with a couple babies on board and she's she's coming to a red light. Well, that flashing, I'm telling you that it definitely the more you can get attention to the guy behind you. Well, don't some of the cars have those... Like uh, the brake lights up in the in the yeah in windshield there. or the the back window more higher up like in the like they could probably have it to where it's attached to that area where it just blinks right that's just I'm just saying the pulsating thing because if you remember like if you see motorcycles coming down or they get their headlight pulsating or when they go to brake some of them have the pulsating brake light on the motorcycles now you notice that is all I'm saying and at the same time it's it's the more the more vigilant or the more aware people are of each other out there because of look let's be honest you know people people would say well you know it's your responsibility to keep your damn eyes on the road okay yes i agree with that but at the same time people are not so why not take a little more precaution and have your ass flashing at them if if you know what i'm saying i'm just even saying. even you know Nobody keeps their eyes on the road 100% of the time because they have to look in their mirrors. True. Well, you're looking in your mirrors, especially as a truck driver, you're doing it continually. Your eye is not forward looking at the v- the road in front of you. You're looking in your, your side mirrors. If you are looking, you know, glancing over at your GPS to see what, you know, how much further for your turn, your eyes are not on the road 100% of the time. You do look around in your your cab. You do look around outside. You don't. You're, they're not straightforward continually. No, no, I 100 percent agree. Uh, but at the same time, the actual I think really the big worry is, and and because you have stuff to think that truckers, right, with the CB, you don't see people getting distracted on the CB because they're walking, they're driving, and it's part of their job. They're not walking. They're, dri- <laughs> they're driving down the road. It's it's not part of their job. And so what happens is they're they're monitoring with the CB, warning each other, blah blah blah. But hence the cell phone. And and think about this also. When you look down at your instrument panel, right? You look down at um, your your gauges. Say you want to check your heat gauges and your oil gauges and blah blah blah. Right? It's never a distraction because you go down. And you look back up. Something falls on the floor. You look down. You go back up. But the cell phone, when you have a Facebook or a message, you're now concentrating on or a video, anything or anything. Well, let's just t- take texting. Uh, a message from your your wife coming in or your friend or whatever sends you a, a funny message. Yeah, looking forward to you getting home this weekend. We're gonna be out at Sadie's bar and and we're gonna be shooting pool and blah 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 blah. Whatever. And now your mind. Is is now fixated on this thing below, and your and your friend has just now taken your mind back home as you're looking at this screen below, and so all of a sudden you are not even thinking that you're driving, and that's what that's what this is, you know, these pulsating lights. I think it could kind of smack you in the eye, like, hey, look up here. Right. Yeah. No, I agree with you because they say you have muscle memory. Mm-hmm. When you're looking at your gauges, when you look down, you automatically, you know, you can gauge just by visual. You're not actually reading the words. You're not actually looking at the, the, the little dashes. Or when you look at the speedometer, you're not actually looking at the numbers. You're looking at where on the gauge everything mm-hmm. is because that's your, your, your own memory of everything tells you, okay, if it's too far over this way, I am going too fast. Or if it's whatever the case might be the same with your GPS, when you're looking, you're seeing the road signs. So you can actually just, you're just visually, you know, you're not seeing anything, but when you're reading a text, you're actually 
transcribing the words mm-hmm. and it's it's a it's a deeper level than just on that top layer of your your mind on what you're doing. So I, I like that wording. It's a deeper level. It really is. It takes your mind to a different level of 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 I don't want to say euphoria, but in a sense your mind is now in a a more transcendental state of time or whatever different you want. concentration. Yeah, yeah, you've just taken it away. Um you know, I was thinking about uh one of the things uh they teach you in in different trucking schools is to be constantly looking in your West Coast mirrors, right? So look, I think it's like every seven to 10 seconds or something like that. You're supposed to be constantly monitoring your truck. So you talk about, like you just mentioned, you're constantly taking your eyes off Mm -hmm. of the front. Well, if, if you're trucking correctly, this is a trained habit you're supposed to develop is... Okay, and then when if you let's just say you're on an interstate with three lanes, you're in, and you're in the middle, and you see a vehicle, you most truckers can tell you. I know there's a white car three cars back. I know there's a a Schneider truck to my left. Uh, uh, I was gonna say passing me, but I doubt that. But <laughs> but, but you 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 can normally you know your surroundings. But most yeah, most truckers have have a better than I, I, an autonomous truck. Yeah, I mean, that's cool. They fail. But I, I believe in truckers uh, better than I would an autonomous truck. And you think about how truckers, a really, really good trucker, he can tell you. Really, really good. You're really, really good. No, <laughs> no, but a really awesome truck driver that is is polished, okay, he can tell you how many vehicles are behind him, how many are coming up, and if you're constantly monitoring, you know, and you know, okay, I know this guy's closer than he was. I know this guy's backed off. I know this guy's zigzagging. I know, I, you know, all the things that a good trucker does, okay, uh, is, is on the level of operating that vehicle. Enter in a text. Mm-hmm. And they're they're lost. The, the whole right. routine he had. It's like a virus. In well, your head. well, not only that, but you're so used to doing a routine. Like as a driver, you're going down the road. All right, I'm looking to my left. Yep, I back up. Okay, I'm looking to my right. I'm back up. All right, I'm I'm glancing again here. Like you have a routine that you are so used to, you're not even recognizing you're doing it because it's just something that you're habitually doing. Well, when the text comes in, you're out of that routine immediately because you got distracted. You're pretty bad if you're looking at the text while you're backing up because you just said you're backing. <laughs> I back up. I back up. You meant you meant just I'm just going down the road. No, uh, yeah, I wasn't. You're you're looking back up there. You're oh, looking back you're looking, over there. Looking back up. I yeah. apologize. I thought you meant you're backing up. No, 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 no. No, that's just my stupid talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, that's no, cool. No, you're 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 glancing over here, back over there. That's I was just okay. Back, back this, up. Back okay. That, okay. Back with this, your eyes here, back over there. You know. But no, I actually yonder. <laughs> I I but I yonder. I I agree one hundred percent. That's just really when you take when you take that out of. When you when you add something into the mix like that, and look, even a trucker is capable, I believe, of taking a phone call. But now you know it's it's all hands free. You can't yeah. you can't actually have one in your hand, which is cool. Um, but the bottom line is, you would think that the CB would have been an issue over the years, and it really wasn't because they're looking forward. They know, like you had said, they get into these routines. They know. Uh, grab my CB. Hey, there's one back in the middle. You got a, you got one taking your picture back at the 144. You know, and and they they do it all without even a blink. They're so used to doing it, they don't even realize they're doing it. But add in something that takes their mind off of the job, it's and a, that's when the danger rolls in. It's a different sensory when you're doing when you're talking and driving. You you can and anybody can talk and do a lot of things. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just you can't talk, tap your head and rub your belly at the same time. Usually it's a little concentration there. It is a little harder. <laughs> you ready to move on? But most drivers can do that. But when you add a text, you're adding, adding you're changing your visual. Yeah. And I think that's what it is, is you're 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 adding a different. Yeah. Thing. You're you're now mixing pleasure with business. So but anyways, let's move on. Hey, Troy, before we go on, can we mention our sponsors? J.J. Keller. Uh, they are the experts at uh, DOT paperwork. If you're a small trucking company that's looking for uh, uh, monitoring. If you're a, a driver that wants to become an, a, a, a trucking company, it's never been a better time. And right now, if you go to, what's their website? 
dot trucking authority dot com backslash talk cdl right and and just enter to win they're having a contest and the winner will get free monitoring and like i said if you've not an owner operator and you're wanting to become a uh, a driver with your own dot authority never been a better time freight is out there who else we have we have rev insurance rev insurance give them a call 800-347-5373 have them give you a quote for free to see what you can you can get save what savings you can get they can save up to 37%. Their website also is www.revinsurance.com. Yeah, they only work with truckers so they're an exclusive trucking insurance company and like you said the savings I would just call just to compare and mm-hmm. and double check on my own insurance company call Rev up and ask them for a good a quote on whatever insurance you have, liability, cargo, whatever you need, and see if they can save you a lot of money. It's worth it. And then we also have national carriers, NCI. Uh, they are a reefer company in the uh, Dallas, Texas area. Irving? Somewhere there. Right. They're Texas. owned by a beef company. They have zero broker freight. They have, like, the most awesome T680s loaded up. It's all standard equipment. Give them a call. They can do a lease for you. They got uh, regional. They got company positions, team positions, student positions. And their number is? 888-311-7076. Again? 888-311-7076. Hey, there you go. So we just wanted to throw in a quick plug for all of our sponsors. Now, back to the show. Back to the show. <laughs> Onward we go. <laughs> I noticed Kenworth... In 2021 is uh, going to start producing the T680E. You know what the E stands for? I know you do. You got to say it a little louder. Electronic. Yes. Well, electric. It's going to be a battery operated um, tractor, class eight battery electric model. Um, It's going to be the first one ever they have. And they're the first ones really. They're like innovators. In their 97-year history. And, of course, it's, this is all to get to this zero emission thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're going to start rolling these trucks out in 2021. And most of them are going to be day cabs because, get this, they really have an operating range of 150 miles. Uh-huh. And I was thinking to myself, well, that'll suck. It, and Because most day cab guys, let's be honest, most day cab guys, they are in and out of the truck running, you know, P&D, which is pickup and delivery. And they're backing in and out, and they're running around the cities, blah, blah, blah. And most of them really run anywhere from 100 to 200 miles in a day. So, obviously, if you're a company where your drivers average, say, 180 or even over the 150, what are you picking at your teeth for? I got a piece of popcorn stuck up in there. Yeah, I know. That's why I used the pick last night when you Ruth Ann made, like, all of, What kind of popcorn did you make? It was cheddar. And what was that Mexican one? Nacho. Nacho. Man. Nacho a, popcorn. Man. That was pretty good stuff, though. I love fresh pop popcorn. Yeah. It's not the bag stuff because that leaves a greasy film on your tongue. Right. Yeah. And we, we had little Kira with us. Mm-hmm. How old's Kira? Kira's three, our granddaughter. Yeah. And she was just eating the tar out of that stuff. She ate a lot of popcorn. That was crazy. So going back to the electric Kenworth, this was a, I mean, I, I, honestly, it didn't, it doesn't give the price range. See if you can find the price on on what the uh, 2021? Well, I'm looking here. It does say it's a. It's got the the 150 mile range. Well, that's what I wanted to talk about. And it's about. got a 3.3 hour charging time, but it's designed for the P and Ds, like you were talking about. Right. Exactly. So if you think about it, if if you were driving, and you had to charge this thing, it 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 which three and a half or 3.3 hours to charge it up isn't that bad at all, if you think about it. But in no way, what I was thinking was, in no way is this a road-ready truck at this time, only because if you only could go 150 miles and you gotta, then you got to sit for three and a half hours charging, it would be a little bit. So they're going to actually, um, in my guess, would have to guess um, that they're going to have to get better battery range for, oh, over, for the over-the-road over trucks. They might do a, like, at these... Little places like you know how now you can go into different restaurants and there's little plugs for charging stations. Like Disney has a charging station for their electric car, like the Teslas and that. Yeah, yeah. they'll probably have something there where the trucks can. Well, the turnpikes even have them here in Florida. They have a bunch of uh, charging stations. But what I was going to say though is, 
And I was actually talking to a trucking company that's up in Minnesota the other day, and they do a lot of local work. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Um, well, the company said that the drivers actually drive upwards of, you know, 200 miles a day. So, obviously... Blows that 150 mile. Companies that average over 150 miles a day are... Would, and, and again, I, I love Kenworth. I'm not trying to put the car, the vehicle down. I mean, this is how, if you look back through time, you know, from different motors and 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 different braking systems and and transmissions, and you know, the, look at look at how long way the the sticks came to automatics. You know what I mean? In, in the trucking industry, I would say that this probably has to go a little further because 150 mile range until you have to recharge could really be pushing the, you know, a company that buys one, but I'm sure look, California just announced that by a certain year that all tractor trailers, I can't remember, maybe 2030, maybe, or something like that over the next so many years, they all have to have zero emissions. So who knows? This is the start of it, I guess. You also have a top speed of 70. Did you notice that? I did. I forgot about that, though. So the trucks, and, and here's the thing. If you look at the torque, they have so much horsepower, and then I guess they can reach another, it's like, is it 400 and some horse, something like that, four or 500 horse? And then can it can go higher if it needs it. 536 horsepower conti- of continuous horsepower, 670 peak. So right. 536 continuous and 670 peak. So we were talking to one of our friends in the church the other day that's a big Tesla lover. And he was he was telling me that he loves his Tesla. Well, he had sold it, but he really truly loved that car. He said he said, but one of the things was if you step, he said they went like a rocket. But if you step down, it's like anything that's a battery operated. If you crank it up to where it's maximum, battery drainage is huge. So again, I'm gonna guess that there's gonna be. When you think Kenworth would offer deals because of skepticism. Well, the truck. here's the thing. If California is, is wanting to do no emissions, period, and we already know how California is, they're not going to want to, if the state already is going to be hitting to that point and forcing people to have to do it, it's going to be where Kenworth can charge whatever they want over there because they're going to have to buy it. <laughs> there's That's no, there's no point. choice. You're going to have to pay that. You want to pay the extra $200,000? Go right ahead. Here you go because you have no choice. Yeah, no, it's I, like when you have no choice but to pay $1.60 for a pack of bread because you need the bread. So you're going to pay that. And well, yes, I know bread's more, but I, I, you're going to have my bread. You know, Kenworth, is, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't know that they would. But then again, I guess anybody, like you said. It's a money thing. They're going to charge whatever they want. Well, yeah, but I don't know, you know, by the time it's in place. I'm actually trying to look up the dang price of the well, truck if, right now. Well, if, if Kenworth is the only one, other than like Tesla or whatever, that is offering the battery, the battery mm-hmm. they can charge whatever they, they, they can. So they're going to be charging whatever they want to charge it because they know they have the, the, the corner of that part of the industry right now. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what is a... I don't know what a day cab. I was trying to find a dang thing. I couldn't. And yes, bread. My bread's more expensive. I'm going to say that. Yeah. Because we're, I just mentioned bread. Well, I'm, I was actually trying to find the cost of one of these rigs, but I cannot find it. Um, and I wonder what the batteries cost. They got to be huge. And I'd like to see the size of those batteries. But it did say that they are rated for like 83,000 or 82,000, um, you know, gross. So they can go over the standard 80,000 pounds and, and uh, be Well, there's efficient. two of them. There's a 54,000 pound and an 82,000 pound gross. Well, the one's a straight truck. The one you're the fifty two thousand is a straight truck. It's fifty four, but yeah. Yeah, fifty four thousand one is a straight truck. So and then eighty two is the. But anyways, this remains to be seen. That's all. I just wanted to kind of bring it up, and you know, um, I think electric cars are cool because they're really quiet and smooth. The shifting—it's a two-speed transmission—is what they said they have in that in that day cab. But 
you know, it remains to be seen. I would imagine over the years, it's just like anything else. It's going to get better. It's going to get more efficient. It'll get stronger. Um, and I guess the competition will get better and the pricing will probably be where it needs to be. What would you think there? I agree. Okay. So should we move on? Listen, I know keeping up with your authority and renewals can be a challenge. As a thank you to talk CDL listeners, J.J. Callender would like to offer six months of free DOT authority monitoring to a lucky listener. Basically, we'll watch over your authority, send you a monthly report for six months, help you fix anything that falls out of compliance, and renew your MCS-150 form and VMT, as well as file your UCR for free. After six months, you can choose to cancel or continue your service for just $39.99 a month. To enter and for official rules, visit truckingauthority.com slash talkcdl. Yeah, there's a subject that um, has been put out to the attention of a lot of recruiting managers and safety directors that the drivers kind of should be aware of right now. What are you talking about? Hey, pass that roach over here. I'm just kidding. Is that <laughs> it took me a minute. I'm like, roach, where? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of bug. <laughs> yeah, you're talking about the drug failures. Yeah. The, right now, for the month of September, mm-hmm. they just got in for the clearinghouse the um, updated results of positive testing. I think it was in September, right? Yeah, September I said that. Well, Oh, you did. I'm sorry. Yeah, he's not paying attention. I have wife blocker on. Well, okay. that and he's too concerned about a roach, I guess. <laughs> no. 8% increase. Eight, eight and 9.3. Well, 8 is for the, um, you have the positive and the, the refusals. So it's 8% and 9.3 for between the two of them. Right. Well, I mean, and here's, th- to me, I was looking at the um, statistics also on on the account for drug failures. In, so I guess in, in August, trucker drug failures went down. And that was because, obviously, there wasn't b- as many being reported because not as many were working right. in August. Right. So September, they started hiring more, and the numbers went up. And they're saying, well, over the next so many months, you're going to see the numbers really going up. Well, yeah. but, but here's an alarming Drivers number. Drivers have been home having fun. The um, return to duty status, which is a, somebody that... Is or I'm sorry, in the return to duty process, right? These uh, there's thirty four thousand one hundred fifty six. Now I guess that's for the month, for the month of September, and if you look roughly, yeah, because that's as of October first, right? And if you look at the percent of drivers that haven't started the RTD process, which is the return to duty status. It's almost 80%. Mm-hmm. It says 25, I'm sorry, 26,590 truckers that either failed or refused a drug screen have not even tried to do what's called the SAP, which is a substance abuse program. They have to have a DOT certified substance abuse program uh, completed, all right, in order for somebody legally to hire them. Right. So, so what they're saying is... The that's R- if their insurance company allows them to do that. Well, they have to, well, every trucking company is obligated to appoint a, a, a truck driver. Just so you tr- trucking companies out there, you're obligated, okay, to give information to a truck driver that fails the uh, drug screen or refuses it. Your, right. your obligation is to, to point him towards the SAP program. That's right. the truth. It's a, no, a I wasn't meaning that. I mean, there's a lot of companies that even if you complete the SAP a lot of companies don't know that. They think, oh, he failed. See ya. Well, mm-hmm. no, you're supposed to give him some information. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought companies were smart enough to know that they have to. No, not yeah. a lot of them are that smart. Mm-hmm. But so so also think about this. Um, what it's what it's really alleviating to is there the article is is saying that it sounds like eighty percent of these guys were just Saying screw the trucking industry, I'll just go do something else. It is saying that. That's so we're lo- so we're losing truckers after they fail a drug screen. And a few truck drivers that are listening to this, you still can drive. There's a lo- bunch of companies that'll hire you after you complete an SAP. And they're not all crummy tr- companies either. No. There's some of them are good companies. Yeah, there's a lot of good companies out there, but um, you have to at least comply and get your. Uh, 
program completed. It doesn't cost much. and You don't have to even go through much. It's just the, I get, you meet like with a counselor. So I don't even really I think know. it's like a three month, isn't it? A no, no. It's only a couple of days. It's only, you can do it in like a week, I think, a week or two. I it's, thought there was a follow up. Yeah, there's a follow up, but there's not, I don't, I'm telling you, it's not long. It's, well, check it out. If you're, if you're a driver that needs to do it, get it done because it's something that is important if you decide to ever come back into the trucking industry, you have to have this on file that you've completed it. Yeah. So if you're a truck driver and you think, um, oh, well, I failed it. I'm screwed for three years. That's not true. No. It's, I mean, at one time it was. Yeah. I mean, it really was big time, but it's, there's a lot of companies looking at it differently now. I, and, and that may be because there's a lot of states that um, have legalized marijuana. I don't know what the reasoning is, Ruth Ann. Maybe I think, I think sorry, I didn't mean to ahead. cut you off, Go but ahead. I think it's, I think a lot has to do with the fact that, you know, dry, it's, it's a physical job. And some drivers, yes, have gone and and have taken pain medication or. Oh, so you're things. giving you're saying the excuse why the drivers are doing the drugs. Yeah. So why are they smoking weed? Oh, that's pain relieving too. It is. Yeah. So but what happens? It's not the fact that you get high or anything. Like no, that. no, no, no. That wouldn't be. Heck no. Of course not. Pass that rush. Not my not my drivers. These are my buddies. Bungie. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying is, just like any you know anybody else in the in the in the world. They can have something like that happen to them where they they ended up being on something legally, but it ends up coming and, and, and pops them. And what happened is they have to go through that program because they are now getting off of it. And, you know, some drivers have gotten addicted to their pain medications. You know, it's something that, you know, most, you know, a human can have that happen. But unfortunately, you just can't do it while you're driving the truck and, don't mm-hmm. let your pride stand in your way of, of keeping a, a job that you actually truly like. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is, guys. I, my, my, and I, I think what happened also while you're seeing an alarming rate of failures, a lot of them milked the uh, unemployment that we've mm-hmm. been talking about a lot lately to the very end. And then they, when the money ran out because they haven't released the second stimulus or anything like that, so a lot of them were holding out, trying to, you know, I mean, yeah. whatever the case trying is. Trying to take as long as I possibly reason. can you know, to stay at home. And, and that's understandable. Th- th- there are reasons, there are reasons. I don't really, but, but, um, and then when you realize, oh, I need to make a paycheck and you show up at, at a, a DOT drug testing uh, clinic, I think, I don't know, maybe you should have stayed home longer at that point. Yeah. But Don't, don't screw yourself anymore, yeah. drivers. So. Anyways, uh, should we move on? Do we have anything else, Ruth Ann? Do you have any? I do. What do you got? Um, there is a star from the Ice Road Truckers. and um, A star? You yeah, mean well. An actor star? Oh, a trucker that's a star on Ice Road Truckers. Go ahead. What's okay. his name? What's the guy's name? Art Burke. Art Burke. So he decided to get involved in the drugs himself. <laughs> really? And he is now serving 18 months in house arrest because he was caught. What was he doing? He was... You got to watch saying he's into drugs. <laughs> we get a lawsuit going on. Well, he was making it. He was, oh, he was really? charged in connection with a fire at an apartment building in um, Canada. And when they found everything there, they found that there were forms of shatter there shatter what's shatter shatter is which i'll explain it but i'm going to finish this one part here burke was injured the, the the driver was injured in this explosion that um caused the fire that caused the fire so yeah and they found the shatter there so all of those kind of stemmed together and that's how they were able to to feel that he was part of it but i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to read you what shatter is. And the reason I'm saying this is because sometimes drivers, you might not be involved in the drugs yourself, but you might have kids. Oh, so it says it's a concentrated form of cannabis called shatter is what he was making. Mm -hmm. Shatter, S-H-A-T-T-E-R. And this came off Trucker News, by the way. Uh, We want to plug them. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to read you um, some information more on what shatter is because there's a little bit more to it. And the reason is, I mean, some drivers might know this stuff only because, you know, they, they're they intelligent enough to know what this stuff is. I'm not. So it just, I'm not around it. I'm just going to go on the record and say, though, if, if I was an ice road trucker up there in the frozen tundra, you know, a little shatter. 
a little help with something. I'm not. No, I wouldn't want to. You just sat there, and, and I sat there back there and said about gyrers. I'm no. I'm not saying get smoke weed while you're on the road or anything like that. I'm just saying, can you imagine living up there with nothing going on? I'm, and look, I'm not a choice. I'm not an advocate for any drugs. I'm just saying. You know, choice. weed is getting legal. That's all I'm saying. It's, you know, the Indian smoke. But it. I don't think this form of weed is legal. Yeah. Shatter? So shatter is the first drugs were likely discovered through accident and observation. As early humans tried different plant, animal, and mineral substances, they realized that some substances produced special medicinal effects. They were then able to use the substances that had beneficial effects to achieve desired results, and they passed their knowledge of these drugs from generation to generation. That's how this started. Isn't it odd? What's that cultivating and No, I'm just saying how this how this description started, how it passed from generation to that's generation. That's what I'm saying. And it, that's why the drugs get stronger as we go because they're all Well, this was all medicinal. Now, yeah. it says this has not been the case with recreational drugs. With these, there has been a fast track to find out ways to create, distill, and distribute highly addictive drugs for profit and gain. The latest addition to this race is the marijuana derivative called Shatter. Also called butane hash oil, B-H-O. Shatter has a number of street names including honey oil, wax, sap, and butter, B-U-D-D-E-R. Shatter is still a relatively new marijuana concentrate that garnered its nickname due to its brittle texture and color. It looks like peanut brittle without the peanuts. Really? Or there's candy my mom used to make out of molasses. You heat the molasses up and then you pour it over, um, like you put other stuff in it. But then you pour it in a, in a cookie sheet. Mm-hmm. And then once it's cooled down, you pop the cookie sheet and it, it just shatters everything. And you have these Oh, that's why they call it shatter. Well, shatter looks like that. So, but it shatters when you break it. Do you, it it just, looks like glass. Do you it looks smoke like, it or eat it? Well, I'm going to get there. Good. Even more alarmingly, alarming than shatter highly addictive properties, however, is the manufacturing process, which is a natural plant is mixed with chemical, which is in turn often yield its explosive results. At this base level, shatter is concentrated marijuana that is extracted through an extremely volatile chemical process. In other words, it's a lot harder. Um, let's see. It's got the psychoactive properties of marijuana, form of THC, but it's more potent than marijuana's traditional form. Is it addictive? Highly. It's extremely addictive. Wow. It's more addictive than regular pot. Right. Not that pot's really that addictive, according to potheads. A lot, I, I knew some potheads. Remember the old saying, pothead, he's a head? Back when I was in school, they'd call you a head. Not me. They would call the potheads a head. So in order to create shatter, butane is used to extract the cannaboid, can, can, cannabinoids and terpen. Tur- terpenes from cannabis plant matter yielding an extremely p- potent type of cannabis concentrate known as butane hash oil, hence the nickname BHO. The careless of the home process is what yields to the explosions. So evidently, like I guess meth can do the same thing or one of those other ones where you... When you're creating it, you can have high, highly explosive. Oh stuff. yeah, yeah. There's a lot of meth labs that explode. So, so anyway, so this guy was trying to make shatter, and it exploded and created a fire. You know, I was reading it myself, and it looks like it's really kind of weird. He got sentenced to 18 months house arrest, but it said part of his arrest is going to be in the cab of his truck while he's working. What the hell kind of sentence is that? You're under arrest while you're in that truck. You must stay in that truck. I don't know. What can he get out just to fuel and eat? I mean, it doesn't even make sense. Mm. Did you see that? Yeah, and none of it makes sense to me. It doesn't make I mean, how do you get arrested? That's like arresting somebody and saying, all right, you're arrested at that bar room. You have to sit there. You can't leave there mm-hmm. except to go home. So you're you're so basically he's allowed to work. I, I he's, he's on house arrest, so he can't... Well, I mean, if you're a trucker, all you do is work and, and go home and sleep. I mean, there ain't much in between if you're a full-time trucker. Well, if you're an ice road trucker and you you were getting tons of money for doing that job, you just got nailed and... Well, I think the seat... I don't think they have it on anymore. I don't know. But so I'm going gonna, 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 I'm gonna to br- tell you here. So it comes in, a ma- in from, of course, the makeshift labs... So it's meaning that it's made with, because it's made with butane, it can also be found in the mixture still. So 
when you decide that you're going to smoke this, you're also going to be smoking the butane that was created with it. So a small amount of this is placed on a heated surface that is connected usually, and again, to a water pipe. This process is called dabbing and can be extremely dangerous if only because of the fumes the addict in, is inhaling. This can result in the side effects that um, include a not limited to a weakening immune system, extreme irritation of the airways causing narrowing and spasms, infections such as bronchitis, asthma, and sinusitis, increased heart rate and blood pressure that can result in strokes, anxiety, loss of concentration, and weakened ability to remember things. It's called wet brain. <laughs> wet brain. Wet, wet, wet brain. This comes from shatter? Yep. Wet brain. Wet brain. That's weird. Physical dependence on cannabis concentrates that lead to tolerance, meaning larger and more frequent doses, just like, um, what's that? Was that meth? Or heroin does Crack. that. Crack. Yeah. I don't know. And then sleep disorders or problem sleeping. So if you are one of these people, you know, we kind of see what, what some of the things are. Sounds like when you go beyond the natural weed... Mm-hmm. It just starts getting kooky. Well, I mean, it's, it's... Why do people do that? It's like, you know, you can't just live with a good pot high. And I'm not saying I like pot. I'm not a pothead. I'm just saying you got a natural weed that you can smoke. And instead, you choose to keep strengthening it, strengthening it and strengthening it. It doesn't even... Well, whatever. People... Love to uh, increase, increase, increase. It's just the natural uh, inside we have. I don't. I. You have anything else? Uh, hopefully, hopefully people will, um, you know, not get involved into this, and it will die out faster than some of the other drugs. But if you are a person that's seeing certain things around the house, like a parent, and you're seeing your kid now carrying a butane lighter, lighter or like they're they're so involved in getting butane, question them. If, and if you die, they might actually say this man was shattered. Oh, that was poor. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Peace. Peace. Praise the Lord.